Hello, Jess Too Good here. Today we're taking a look at the Lego Ninjago Summer 2020 Woo's Battle Dragon set. This has a total of 321 pieces, too many figures, and retails for $20 in the United States. I got this a little bit early from Europe from my friend Tom Jurassic. Not sure when it releases specifically in the United States, but let's take a look at those minifigures. The first minifigure we'll take a look at is what they call Hero Woo, so I guess this is different from Sensei Woo, just an updated, more badass look. This design, I believe, has a face print and leg printing that aren't new, but only came in like one set, which was the Land Bounty. And then the torso print is new and exclusive to this set. And you can get a better look at that new torso underneath with the beard removed, as well as that face print, which looks really cool. And the face printing even has a little bit of a hair design at the back, which is another cool update. And Wu has a pretty cool build for his staff as an accessory. The enemy of this set is Glek. Now this is a figure that also comes in about two other sets of this wave, but this is by far the cheapest set to get him in, so that's really cool because I like getting this new color for that hair hat combo. I was introduced with the CMF Goblin a couple years back. This purple looks really neat, and we do have an alternate facial expression where Glek looks a little bit worried, and that looks pretty adorable. Removing his quiver, you can get a better look at the back torso and at the front as well. For a $20 dragon, this is actually a pretty darn substantial build. I like the amount of bricks they use to capture this brick built look. They don't skimp out with any molded parts, unless you count those plastic wings as a big molded part, because I know some people prefer brick built wings. Of course, back in the day, Ninjago dragon heads used to be just one molded piece. This is all brick built, which is impressive on its own, where it's connected just with a miniature ball joint right at the neck there, and Wu is just falling over. But we also have some great part usage with a one by two jumper for the eyes that's just lined up so it's right in the middle and shows up on both sides. And we also have the rollerblade piece on a piece that's inverted. It's a studs on top technique for the mouth. Though you can't open the mouth, that looks really cool with the textures and everything and even having those small little horn or fang pieces to top off with the shaping. They also use these cattle horn pieces for the shaping around the eyes, which works out really well. But moving on to the next section, there's another section that connects via a miniature ball joint. This part is actually just clipped on so you can move the base of the neck up and down, and then you can move this middle section all around as well as the head. As I said, this was on a miniature ball joint. But now we have the seating area, and this seat is just a one by two divider as well as a one by two tile where Wu can be rested on and that divider holds him in place. We also have these two clips at the back so that you can put some of the weapons there if you want it to be held that way. And he's holding on to this small chained little bar right here. This design just attaches to the side of the neck part. And it's actually kind of a cool way to show that he is driving the dragon but it just kind of attaches onto one hand since the bar is not big enough to make it also be held by a second hand. For the tail, it begins with a clip connection at the base, and then we have these miniature ball joints so you can position this as you'd like. They even round off the underside with some inverted tiles as well as these one by two round plates. For the wing build, I like how this film or plastic part is held into place using these one by one stamp pieces and how they kind of have an inverted design using the Technic pins to connect those. It's just some interesting part usage if you ask me. And this is clipped on so that you can move the wings each at the base, just up and down. Again, clipped on right here and also actually a hinge connection as well. The wing on the other side uses the same build and connection technique. The build for the legs are the same on both sides where we have two different builds, one for the front leg and then one for the back leg. So the back legs are actually not fixed in place where you have this mid joint that you can adjust and move back and forth, as well as this foot point, which you can move back and forth. Now those are all connected via clips. I shouldn't even say joint because they're actually clipped on. The front ones are also clipped on, but the mid section is actually fixed in place with this body piece right here. I remember they used to use this for the aliens back in life on Mars. And so that gives it more of a determined position, but you still have a little bit of movement with this bottom foot part, and you can still move it back and forth at the base, which it is connected via a miniature ball joint, but that miniature ball joint's positioning doesn't allow for rotation, just movement back and forth. 
Either way, for some poses, it looks like the battle dragon's about to pounce. Here it is flying. And here it is in the closest position to sitting down. But that's it for the build of the dragon. Let's take a look at the side build. And with this new wave of Ninjago sets, they all have these side builds that connect to form a game board. We'll show them in the instructions later on. But this is just the game board piece. Very small expansion found in this set. But it does come with this new sword piece, which I really like. I like how the handle has a little skeleton head to the end. They even have some molding on the blade as well. Pretty interesting design if you ask me. I also like getting that flame piece in green, which is new for this season in that coloring. But either way, that's it for the builds of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this set actually looks really darn cool. I think this new style for this season of boxes is fantastic. And you do have a look at the set at the back. Kind of like how they have almost a picnic table for the setting there. And for the instructions at the end, we do have an advertisement that shows the expansions. Like I said, each of these come with side builds that you can expand, even if they're a build as little as this little small ugly rock piece. And I hope to see all of the sets with their expansions connected, because that would be pretty interesting. So overall, Wu's Battle Dragon is a fantastic $20 set. I think the build for the dragon looks great in how they have it all brick built with intricate details illustrated with some interesting part usage. And then the design of the minifigures is actually really cool with an updated Wu and Glek who has a nice color scheme. All that is packed into a $20 set that nowadays by modern Lego standards should be a $30 set. So we're getting quite a deal here. With all things considered, I'd rate this set an A. Love the dragon build, love the minifigure selection, and as a whole, I think this is just a fantastic deal for 20 bucks. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.